namaste and welcome back to grow with the jam family today we're going to watch uh Fareed's take on no practical reason for israel to make a deal with palestine um you know we know that there's been a ceasefire in mm -hmm. israel and uh, we're glad for that we do want stuff to be done peacefully um we don't want to see any more deaths but we don't like the israelis to be taken advantage of either. And I right. feel like, you know, I heard the other day um, that the United Nations was going to investigate like the actions that Israel took, but it's more of a defense mechanism because you yeah. have 500 rockets being shot into your land. What are you supposed to do? You have to take action. And I feel like when it's, people that I would consider terrorists, honestly, unless you're starting a full out war, um, when you're hiding behind a school building and shooting off rockets, that to me is a terrorist act. Yeah. You can't like, I don't know. You can't turn the other way. I, I just feel like the Jewish people get the short end of the stick because even though they would be considered minority, they do well. They're highly mm -hmm. educated. They're, Israel is doing amazing money-wise, militarily-wise. You know, even here, they're doctors and lawyers. Like, they're not asking for money. They're not mm -hmm. usually the ones that are like, poor me, poor my country, poor Which my people. Which is kind of now pushing on to them because they're not doing that. Right. So now we're, um, we're kind of taking advantage of them more because they're not saying... Right. Help me. Right. So I guess if you're not, you know, like, oh, poor me, then you're supposed to be above and beyond. It's okay for, you know, Hamas and these groups to fire 500 rockets, but it's not okay for you to turn around and fire back. That doesn't make any sense because yeah. they're, uh, you know, a smaller organization. They don't have the manpower. They don't have the money power. And, and they're doing it because they, they think that they own all the land, but doesn't make it any better no. and I just feel like Israel really needs to stand strong in this um, like we said we stand with Israel but I'm interested to, to hear his um, reasoning behind why he says this you know yeah so let's start it up it's been the same way for decades every time violence between the Israelis and Palestinians erupts governments around the world urge de-escalation a ceasefire agreement is reached and experts warn the situation cannot continue like this. But it has, and it will. Ultimately, this is not a problem that can be resolved through power, whether political or military. It can only be resolved through moral persuasion. The recurring pattern of violence obscures a seismic shift that has taken place over the last few decades. Israel is now the superpower of the Middle East. Yeah. An institute at Bar Ilan University recently laid out the disparities. Israel's per capita GDP dwarfs that of its neighbors. It is 14 times that of Egypt, eight times that of Iran, six times that of Lebanon, and even double that of Saudi Arabia. Israel has built an industrial and information age economy that excels in highly sophisticated arenas like artificial intelligence, aviation, computer aided design, and biotechnology. It spends 5% yeah, of its motto. GDP on research and development, more than any country on the planet. Mm -hmm. It has built up foreign exchange reserves of over $180 billion, placing it 13th in the world, just ahead of the United wow. Kingdom. For a nation of 9 million people, these are stunning numbers. A military comparison between Israel and its neighbors is even more lopsided. Israel beat a combined Arab force in 1967 in six days. Today, the contest would be over in hours. Israel has a larger defense budget than Iran's and enjoys both a quantitative and qualitative edge in crucial areas such as air power even though Iran has almost 10 times the population. And of course, Israel has the only nuclear weapons arsenal in the region, estimated at almost 100 warheads. Yeah, the Iron Dome. Israel is yeah. powerful compared to its neighbors, but it is close to invulnerable compared to the Palestinians. 
the economic gap is a chasm. The military gap is too large to describe. You can see this in the comparative casualty numbers from the latest conflict or any recent conflict with the Palestinians. For every Israeli killed, there are 20 to 30 Palestinian deaths. Moreover, the Palestinians are politically weak and divided. They're led in Gaza by Hamas, a group despised even by Arab states like Egypt and Saudi Arabia. In the West Bank, the 85-year-old Mahmoud Abbas runs an administration widely considered corrupt and dysfunctional. He has postponed elections for 11 years. In short, Israel doesn't have any practical reasons to make a deal with the Palestinians. It doesn't fear for its security. While the rocket attacks are unnerving and terrifying to civilians, they do not inflict much damage on the country. Israel's ferocious and effective security services, aided by the construction of a wall along the West Bank and the creation of the Iron Dome air defense system, have virtually eliminated fatalities from terror attacks. Well, they have to, Economic boycotts located. of any significance will not happen. Israel's economy is too strong, diversified, and advanced. Its trade and technology ties to countries have grown by leaps and bounds in the last two decades. Countries like Russia and India, once very wary of it, now eagerly court Israel and its tech industry. Mm -hmm. The reason that Arab countries like the UAE and Bahrain have normalized relations with Israel has much to do with economic opportunities. So what is left is morality. Israel, a powerful, rich, and secure nation, is ruling over nearly five million people without giving them political rights. This is an almost unique situation in a post-colonial world. Israeli leaders can marshal valid excuses. The Palestinian leadership have rejected serious offers in the past. They are divided and vacillating. But ultimately, that doesn't change the reality that Palestinians live in conditions that are demeaning and degrading. They are denied self-determination, which That's is by Israel's now a universal fault, right. That? Over the last two decades, Israel has moved to a more and more intransigent position on the Palestinian issue. The government today is far more extreme than even previous right-wing governments, from Begin to Sharon to Omert, all of which made concessions for peace. But the country does remain a liberal democracy. It was founded by people who believe deeply that their new land should embody not just nationalism, but also justice and morality. There are many in Israel who argue passionately that it can find a way for Israelis to have security and Palestinians to have dignity. The only hope, and right now it looks remote, is that those forces will gain strength and one day lead the country to give the Palestinians a state of their own. That would finally fulfill Israel's true historical mission, to be, in the words of Isaiah, a light unto the nations. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I think he has some good points he makes in the video, um, but he's right. Like, there really isn't any reason for Israel to make a deal. They've right. tried, you know, they've given up Gaza. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they've tried to work more than once, and and we know that they're trying to get back into the two-state system. They're trying to resolve this conflict, but how can you resolve conflict with someone who hates you? Yeah. You really can't win because they're just going to want more and more, and it's just going to spread. Mm -hmm. And Israel does not want that. No. They, they're not going to keep giving up more and more land. Um, you know, they're not going to give up Jerusalem, which is like no. the Holy Land. And, you know, they've, they've talked, and, and I know Biden was talking about the two-state system, too, that, that there needs to be some, some peace there. But I know it's not a peaceful region, and it never no. has been. There's a reason they have an Iron Dome in Israel. There's a reason they have amazing weaponry because everybody around them doesn't like them no. you know and now they have this hamas who's now in charge or like been elected in gaza and and been elected i say because like democratically um but their hamas charter the the reason they have articles it's kind of like our constitution talks about like our struggle against the Jews is great and serious um, of, 
This calls for the eventual creation of an Islamic state in Palestine in place of Israel and the obliteration or dissolution of Israel and emphasizes the importance of jihad. Like, how can you work oh, with people that do, that want to eliminate not only your country, but you? In the constitution. In their constitution, in the written constitution. constitution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know how you can, I mean, I feel like they've been trying. To and, work with them and resolve this conflict, but I don't think there's a really good way to do that. No, when you're living around people that just basically want to kill you because they feel like their religion is above everything else. Everyone else and jihad them. is like you, when you die, that's when you go to heaven. That's when your life really begins and that's when greatness comes to you. So when you have people that have no fear of death because they feel like if they kill others that are not of their religion and then they'll go to have this heaven there's no way to speak with them unless yeah. with violence. So I don't have, I mean, I don't want to see people die, but I also don't feel like when 500 rockets get shot at you, you should stay silent or not do anything. You can't just look the other way. Like you just can't, you mm -hmm. have to show people that it, especially with no fear of death and, and they, they just want to take over and they hate you. Like I think you have to show them power of some way. Right. And that's the thing is I feel like these, the jihad and everything, they look up to power. So when you have the power, you need to show it so that they know that they can't win against you and they shouldn't try, try. to. I mean, he's already said in the video how many, there's no way in yeah. hours Israel could wipe them out in mm -hmm. a second. Um, but you notice, like you said about power, like, when Trump was in power, there wasn't a lot of stuff going on. China wasn't moving, no. inching its way in other places and stuff like this was not happening as much because I think he had that people, look people up fear power. him mm -hmm. because they thought, what the hell is he going to do tomorrow? Um, not that that's good either, but no. I think for organizations that are based themselves on hatred of others definitely need somebody that seems more powerful to scare them a little bit um we do want to see peace we would like to see good things for both we would like it to be a two-state like palestine you know you're, you don't have to be humongous to be great you right. can focus on your economy education what you already have building. bigger isn't always best exactly look at japan yeah. It's a tiny country, and they do not only have amazing technology, have beat China in wars before, mm -hmm. and they're small. You just have to turn your focus away from hate. You know, if religion is, you know, a, a good big focus, then that shouldn't be a bad thing, but it should be more of a personal thing, I think. Right. Like we've always said, like, keep your religion in your house. So right. don't push it against other people. Don't push their religion against your religion or convert them. Like, right. Not it converting shouldn't be others. Yeah. about your religion. It should be about like your smarts or what you can do. Yeah. What can you do for your country? You know, either economically or, you know, brain smarts like science and technology, mm -hmm. you know, your army, like these are the things, you know, building up the education. Um, you shouldn't be building up like, you know, if nobody else is the same religion as you, you have to kill them, and that's your only purpose in life. That's that, that shouldn't, shouldn't be the yeah. whole reason for you to be here, um, because the life here. You know, you notice the people that are the leaders of these jihadis don't go and kill themselves, but mm -hmm. they send their little minions to do the job. Why? Yeah. Because they want to be here. Nobody knows what happens after you die, really. Yeah. So they just put it out there. So you go out and you think yeah. of that way. They're not going to go out themselves because they're in power. Mm -hmm. They would lose their power if they went and killed themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're enjoying being powerful. So better focus, you know, if, if, you know, like you said, like the economy is a big difference. If that's something that Palestine needs help with, 
than working with Israel, working with other countries, but you can't want to obliterate Israel, you know, and the and Jewish people and ask for more land and then ask for money, you know. That's not how it works. Yeah. So so we hope for some kind of peaceful resolution and if it's a two state resolution that things work out for everybody. Yeah. We want good things for everyone. And regardless of your religion, your race um, where you live. Where you live. Doesn't and, matter. And, yeah. We'd like to see peace and for everybody to spro- prosper, you mm-hmm. know. So, um, so like we said, hoping for good things and hopefully we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.